that's pretty cool they're building a new front entrance most people are leaving and a few of us are going in gotta love the century plaza may not be as spectacular as like king's dominion king's island canada's wonderland but might be the best six flags front entrance i know a lot of people like magic mountains but that's actually well down the street after you enter you got to go down the street and then it opens up to that nice view i was able to get on raging bull back row that was probably the best ride i've ever had on it a night ride but also it is hauling i heard people say that it is riding incredible this year and i believe it after that if I got in the regular line, I may not have made it. Although, looks like they just about cleared it. Yeah, they just about cleared the line. So I might have made it after all. But I do have a feeling that some people are not gonna get to ride because the storm is coming in and it's coming in quick. 0% chance of rain tonight. Yeah, that's how it usually works. So I showed up, got a meal, rode Raging Bull and left. And that is a good day. I will be here all day tomorrow though. I wasn't really planning to come here at all today. So 45 minutes, well spent. And I'm here for a full day, sort of. We're gonna get rained out again in the evening, except it's gonna be earlier this time, which means I'll have to leave pretty early, probably about seven o'clock at the latest. And we got people running, run, hurry. The coaster's getting away. Run, run, run. Park maps. I was gonna start the day with X-Flight, but it's a B&M. It's broken. They say that they'll open it later. Got two in a row. Just did the front row, and then I had to move to another row, so row six was open. So <laughs> For the space that they had to work with, they did a great job with the layout. I do think it'll run stronger later in the day, though. The airtime hills weren't hitting like I remember. Force is still broken. I got on Whizzer, that's just as great as ever. And then there is this. You know, five years ago, I was singing the praises of this ride. It still has the aero charm, but it is riding so much worse now than it was five years ago. You still get the really good pop of airtime if you ride in the back on that first drop. That is an awesome airtime moment. That is the only good thing about the ride now now i did not get head banging i don't know how if you don't know how to ride these old aero loopers the way that i do you don't have the experience then you're probably going to get some pretty bad head banging on this the transitions are as bad as ever transitions on these aero loopers were never great but they were a lot more manageable before Unfortunately for me, this is probably going to be one and done this trip. And I hate to say that because you know I'm a big Aero fan if you watch my videos. And Aero loopers are disappearing. The best one of all, Vortex at Kings Island, got removed for some reason. They haven't even replaced it with anything. That was removed five years ago. And it was riding worlds better than this ever has. But meanwhile, X-Flight is running amazing. It's still a little bumpy at spots, but easily manageable. I rode the left side, the wing over drop in the back. Then row three on the right side. And the best restraints are fine, no problem at all.
there seemed to be a little bit of a rattle right around here as you're turning into the near misses. Just a little. And American Eagle is running. Sky Striker just went down. Not that I was planning to ride it anyway. This is a top priority here. This might be my fourth favorite in the park behind Goliath, Raging Bull, X-Flight. Well, American Eagle had a posted opening time of 12.30 p.m. So I started the hike at seven o'clock last night. That Helix is actually not rough at all. I don't understand people who say that that Helix is rough. It's not. It's in some of the valleys where it shakes and almost jackhammers. What's crazy is that Tornado at Adventureland is actually smoother. I'm not talking about Outlaw, I'm talking about Tornado. The one that is famous for being super rough and forceless. No, Tornado has better airtime than American Eagle and is smoother. Oh, they got that up and running again. Those are fun rides, but they're all the same. And we return to civilization after that long journey. drop I think it's riding even better today than it was yesterday I remember my first rise in 2017 this second half it just crawled and now it's just hauling so after five amazing rides on Raging Bull went over and did Viper four laps including three in a row without having to get off the train just had to switch seats then I did a couple rides on the Wizard. It had hardly any line at all. Then I did the Kitty Coaster. What's it called? Oh, Superman. Yeah. It's always nice to take a break from the intense rides and do a nice calm ride like Superman. Then I did Dark Knight. Didn't really like that too much. Came over, did Joker. And yeah, what is wrong with these Six Flags versions of this? Zero flips. All we did was rock back and forth. Then, yeah, you might be upside down at a point or two, but then it pulls you right back. You never complete the flip. On that last ride, I think I might have seen one of the pairs flip. So it does just have to do with uh, weight distribution. So you might flip, you might not. I seem to never flip on the Six Flags versions, and I do not ride passively. I've heard that term before, and I have actually tried to ride passively to see if that actually works, and it doesn't. I've tried to throw my body weight into it as hard as possible. I ride passively, I ride aggressive, I ride in the middle, I've done it all, and I get nothing. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I might even get two or three flips on this. But on the one at Adventureland, I'm getting like seven, eight, nine flips. So I don't know why, with so much more opportunity to flip on these, you get so much fewer, if any at all. And like I said before, when you don't flip, it's more uncomfortable. It's not only less intense, but it's also more uncomfortable to not flip. But whenever you do flip when you're supposed to, it's a much more comfortable ride and it's far crazier. But now I gotta get back on this. I love these impulse coasters, especially the ones without the holding brake. The holding brake stifles the airtime on the back spike. Without the holding brake, you get about seven seconds of sustained floater airtime all the way up and then all the way back down. I know that might be a hot take and a lot of people disagree with me on it. I understand the holding brake is something unique and different, but it actually isn't good. This day is going to get cut a little bit short, but that's okay. I got a lot of rides in today, about 32, I believe, and it is starting to rain. This is just the preview for what's coming in a couple hours. But the rides had to shut down because of it. And once this passes, they might be able to open it back up. 
but I don't want to be out here at nine o'clock right before the big one comes. I want to go ahead and get to the hotel before that happens. So I'll call it good with that. Five rides on X flight. When I was here, when I was here five years ago, I got three rides on X flight in four days. I got five rides on it today. That's because that ride usually gets an hour long wait, even on slow days. Got five rides today, and that is not with the help of Flash Pass at all. I didn't need to use Flash Pass on it at all. Now, this rain is also going to bring in the cold front, which is going to make things a lot more comfortable in the coming days. But the heat and humidity today is probably part of what kept the crowds away and kept the line so short. I, I know I said I've had the Flash Pass, but still. You get a lot more rides when you have no lines, even compared to doing the flash pass. So I'll just wait out this little shower and then head to the car. Got an hour drive to the hotel because I am going to, what is it, Santa's Village Amusement Park tomorrow. And then I'll come back here. I'm starting to wonder if maybe this was more normal for Six Flags Great America, these crowds, compared to the insane crowds that I've encountered on my other visits. But it sounds like it does still get quite busy. But today was a slow day because people probably knew this was coming, so they just didn't come to the park. I took advantage of it, got a ton of rides. I got a lot more done on a day like this than I would have got done on a beautiful day when everybody shows up, when I would have the entire time frame. I lose two hours today, but that's all right. <laughs> 